Welcome. Welcome to this session on spectrophotometric techniques. As we have discussed that the, there are some classical methods and there are some instrumental methods for the pharmaceutical analysis. The pharmaceutical analysis having number of methods like the optical methods, chromatographic methods, electrochemical methods, radioactive methods. And in the optical method, there are two methods which are absorption based and emission based optical methods. They all are related, these optical methods, they are the spectrophotometric techniques. In this session, we are going to discuss about that what is this spectrophotometric technique and what are the principle and what is the scope of this spectrophotometric techniques. Before a spectrometric technique start, we should know what is an EMR, that is the electromagnetic radiations. Yes, these EMR, these, these EMR, they are the like the radio waves, they are the ultraviolet rays, they are the IR infrared rays, they are the cosmic rays, gamma rays, visible rays, they all comes under the electromagnetic radiations. And they have a particular frequency and a particular wavelength. So these spectrometric techniques, they basically they are used to measure the interaction of different frequency component of EMR with that of matter which is inside it. In this ele uh, electromagnetic radiation, these radiation, they interact with the matter or the compound at a specific energy level. And after the interaction with the matter, these radiation they are absorbed. Then the atom or the molecule of that compound or analyte, which is present in the sample, it moves from one energy state to the another energy state. That means that which is usually a ground state level or uh, low energy level to the higher energy level or excited level. So when a compound or an analyte which is there in the sample that is a matter, so when it absorbs the radiations, it moves from one energy level to another energy level that is from lower energy level to the excited or high energy level. But along with this absorption in spectrophotometry, generally we either measure the absorbance or emission of the electromagnetic radiations and this happens when these radiation they interact with the matter or the analyte so we calculate the absorbance or the emission so the interaction of emr with the matter is directly dependent on the energy of radiation we will discuss that what is the energy of the radiation because IR radiation have different energy and then the UV. UV has different energy than the cosmic rays. So spectrophotometry is used to understand how different frequency components of EMR they interact with the sample and how we can use this information to understand the quantity of analyte which is present in the sample. So we can say that this spectrophotometry is basically a set of tools that can be used together in different ways to understand the chemical properties and nature of the analyte present in the sample. In this way, there are two parts. One is the photometry and second is spectrophotometry. This photometry basically is a, it deals with the measurement of light only. So, this photometer, 
the instrument is known as the photometer and it is it is a it is a tool that is used for measurement of intensity of light and while the spectrophotometry the basis of this is that the in this also we measure the intensity of light but at selected wavelength and the method this method spectrophotometry photometry method it depend on the light absorbing and or emission property of either the analyte or a derivative of analyte being analyzed so we can say that the spectrophotometry is used in pharmaceutical analysis for the identification of analyte through the spectrum and that's why the name is spectrophotometry so photometry which is the measurement of light or the measurement of intensity of light and the spectrophotometry is, is a combination of spectrum plus photometry and the spectrum that is the light at selected wavelengths so that's why it is spectrophotometry so spectrum plus photometry and this identification of the analyte through the spectrum it can be through the absorption or the emission which is done by the analyte which is present in the sample so now let's move to towards the electromagnetic radiations so this electromagnetic radiation is a form of energy that is all around us and it takes many forms such as radio waves microwaves infrared rays ultraviolet rays visible rays x rays gamma rays etc for example sunlight which is a form of electromagnetic energy and visible light ultraviolet light they all are very small part of the electromagnetic spectrum now this electromagnetic actually it contain the electricity and the magnetism and they they are the forces which are applied between the electric charges and that's why the force of attraction or repulsion magnetic poles electric current electric field they play important role in the radiations this electromagnetic radiation it spans an enormous range of wavelengths and frequencies and this whole range is known as the electromagnetic spectrum you can see here this is the electromagnetic radiation spectrum so there are some non ionizing radiation and some are ionizing radiation just like x ray gamma rays cosmic rays these are the ionizing radiations and the radio waves microwaves infrared rays they all are the non ionizing radiations among them the radio waves they have the longer wavelength while the cosmic rays they have the shortest wavelength but in terms of frequency the cosmic rays they have the higher frequency than the radio waves and when they have the higher frequency that means they have higher energy so higher frequency higher energy cosmic rays radio waves however they have they are the longer wavelength but their frequency is low as well as the energy is low now going back to the electromagnetic radiation about the frequency and wavelength as you can see in this diagram that the oscillating magnetic field is perpendicular to the electric field basically this electromagnetic radiation they contain the some energy packets which are very discrete 
and these discrete energy packets they are known as the photon so this a photon a single photon it contains an oscillating magnetic field as well as an oscillating electric field so both of these field they are perpendicular to one another so the frequency we can define as the number of oscillation produced by an electrical field radiation per second and its unit is hertz that is one hertz is one cycle per second while the wavelength it is a measurement of distance which exists between two adjacent part of a wave present in the same phase but also it can also be measured as a distance which is present between two adjacent trough or two adjacent crest now these electromagnetic radiation they have different energy level and these energy levels they can be electronic energy level vibrational energy level or the rotational energy level the electronic energy level it is when a molecule exists in the lowest energy level at room temperature which is known as the ground state but when the electromagnetic radiation it falls or absorb by the molecule then the valence electron of the molecule they are promoted to the next higher energy level and which is higher energy level which is known as the excited state so this shifting of the electron from the lower energy level to higher energy level that is from ground state to excited state by absorbing the energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation this is known as the electronic transition and this is the electronic energy level lower level and higher level the vibrational energy level they are less energy level than the electronic energy level and the difference between these energy level is comparatively small and that is uh, 0.01 to 10 kilocalorie per mole and these vibrational energy actually happens in the ir radiation so for example when the uh, ir radiation they are absorbed by the molecule the molecule are ex uh, are excited from lower vibrational energy level to higher vibrational energy level so some molecule it depends on that what radiation we are providing to the molecule what radiation are absorbing by the molecule because the uv uv radiation ultraviolet radiation when they fall they cause the electronic they change the electronic energy level and when the ir radiation fall or absorb by the molecule then the vibrational energy level changes next is the rotational energy level so this level it is very quantized and discrete and the difference between the energy level in terms of energy level these rotational energy they are very less as compared to the electronic and vibrational energy level so they help in during the absorption they help in rotating the atom or the electrons or spinning of the atom so in terms of energy we can say that the change in the electronic uh, the rotational energy is the least then the vibrational energy and the highest energy level transition take place in the electronic energy level now moving to the same electromagnetic radiation spectrum you can see over here in the picture in this picture that the cosmic rays they have the higher 
frequency and as we move towards the radio waves the frequency go down as well as the cosmic rays they have the higher frequency so higher energy and as we move towards the radio waves they have the least energy now in this spectrum there is a you after the x-rays there are ultraviolet rays thereafter the visible light comes and thereafter the infrared start this ultraviolet rays they start from 10 nanometer in terms of nanometer so they start from 10 nanometer but it is it works in the spectrophotometer started from 200 and it goes to up to 400 and from 400 nanometer to 800 nanometer it is a visible light and after 800 nanometer the infrared starts moving to the next part that is principle of spectroscopy so the principle it is based on the measurement of the spectrum of a given analyte which is present in the sample so the spectrum which is consist of the graph of intensity radiation this intensity radiation it can be the uh, through the absorption or the emission by the sample and this intensity radiation versus wavelength or frequency so that is the spectrum now for this we we use the spectrometer and this spectrometer is a device which is used to measure the spectrum of the analyte. Remember that if you have heard or if you have learned something about the colorimeter, it's a one of the advanced instrument than the colorimeter. Because in colorimeter, there are some filters which allow some wide range of wavelengths of radiation to pass through the sample. But in spectrophotometer, which is an advanced form of the colorimeter, there are some grating or some prism are utilized which split the light beam into multiple wavelengths, and this is why this is the advanced form of the colorimeter. And as I said that this is spectrophotometer, that means spectrum plus photometer. So it is an optical instrument that is used to measure the intensity of the EMR, electromagnetic radiation, relative to a specific wavelength, relative to a specific wavelength. So in this we can measure the analyte concentration which is present in the sample by measuring the absorption or the emission by the sample solution. So in this is Remember that in this spectrophotometer, the sample must be in solution form and the solvent that contain the analyzed must be optically transparent in a specific wavelength region. It must be transparent. You can see in this picture that how the lights from a light, light source, some electromagnetic they goes through a lens, which is a collimator, and there is a monochromator in 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 a way of prism or grafting, where it is split into multiple wavelengths. There is a wavelength selector, which is a slit kind of tool. Thereafter, it enters into the sample solution, which is there in the qubit, and there is a finally a detector in the form as a photocell. And there is a digital display meter which show the absorption or the emission or also the transmittance. Now this is spectrophotometer, it looks like typically looks like this. There is a light source, there is a monochromator, there is a qubit and or sample holder, photosensitive detector, and some readout device. These spectrophotometer they can they are single beam spectrophotometer and double beam spectrophotometer. So this light source it actually provides the polychromatic light to the monochromator and this monochromator which diffracts the light.
Now the source of light, they are they depend on the type of the spectrophotometric technique, whether we are using the IR technique or we are following the UV technique. For example, in the UV radiation or the UV technique, the most common source of light are the hydrogen lamp and the deuterium lamp. While for the visible radiation, the most common source are the tungsten filament. And for the just like for IR radiation, the most common source are the nest glower and global. Next is the monochromator. This monochromator, as I said, that it is split the polychromatic light which comes from the light source. In case of UV, it is the hydrogen lamp or deuterium lamp into individual or selected wavelength and separates these individual uh, wavelength into the narrow bands and that further enters into the sample. So this Q-weight and the sample holder, it holds the sample and allow the specific wavelength to pass through itself. These Q-weight, they are transparent from all sides or from at least two sides and they must be made up of uh, 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 quartz material of good quality glass. The photosensitive detector, they are highly sensitive and long term stable detectors and that have the ability to detect the low level of the radiant energy which are coming out of the sample. So after from the detector, there is a readout device which interpret the signals received from the detector. So, depend on the number of the beams which are used, they are these spectrophotometers, they are of two types single beam spectrophotometer and double beam spectrophotometer. In single beam spectrophotometer, single beam passes through the sample present in the qubit. And if we talk about the procedure, what happened in the single beam spectrophotometer? So, first the spectrophotometer is standardized by putting a reference solution in the qubit first. And thereafter, the resulting absorbance is subtracted from the absorbance of the sample solution in order to remove the solvent effect. We will discuss them in, in the UV spectroscopy when we will discuss the UV spectroscopy. And these single beam spectrophotometer, they follow the Beer's lambert law that is used to determine the unknown concentration of the analyte. If we talk about the uh, uh, advantage of the sing uh, single beam spectrophotometer, they are less expensive, uh, high sensitive because due to the non-splitting of the light. So because of this the light they are not split, right? But the disadvantage is that it is not suitable uh, due to the lack of the, uh, you know, some of the disturbances. It happens, some of the uh, it feel, it face some problems, some disturbances. Like first, first is first important is disadvantage is the, it is time consuming. It takes a lot of time. And some are if there is some electronic uh, fluctuation, that means the spectrum may uh, dis get disturbed or because of some voltage fluctuations. The sample, the spectrum may get disturbed. Or due to some uh, instability in the instrument, that's why this is the single beam spectrophotometer disadvantage. Now, in double beam spectrophotometer, it is used for the comparison of the light intensity between two light paths. In single beam, we are using the single beam path, path pass. Uh, uh, single beam passes through the sample, while in the double beam, two light paths. Uh, one beam passes through the reference, another beam from the test sample. In single beam, you have to put first a reference, then take out the reference and then you have to uh, put the sample. Then after you, because it is time consuming. In double beam, simultaneously, one, one, one light goes, one beam light goes to the, the reference and the second beam light goes to the sample. So, it offers a uh, better detection than the single beam spectrophotometer and uh, voltage fluctuation and instability factor, 
hardly affect this because it is much more advanced form of the single beam. But in UV, we will go through the one of the more advanced form that is the Fourier transform spectrophotometer. Fourier transform. We will discuss that in the coming classes. So now the types of spectrophotometric techniques. So these spectrophotometric techniques they can be classified into these three major types of spectroscopy. The one is the absorption spectroscopy, emission spectroscopy, and scatter spectroscopy. So in absorption spectroscopy, the the amount of uh, we measure the amount of the electromagnetic radiation which are absorbed by the sample. And the example is UV visible spectroscopy, atomic absorption spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, and nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Because in this, the absorption takes place. While the emission spectroscopy, the electromagnetic radiation they interact with the sample. The sample it emits some radiation of a specific wavelength, which is then predicted or detected by the by the detector. But remember one thing that in the emission spectrophotometric technique, the sample first absorb the electromagnetic radiation and then emit the light of a specific wavelength. Always remember this. It's not that that it without absorption it emit the radiation. No, first it absorb the radiation. And thereafter, it emit the radiation of a uh, specific wavelength. Example are the atomic emission spectroscopy because atomic absorption spectroscopy is also there, but atomic based on emission, atomic emission spectroscopy is there also. Fluorescence emission spectroscopy, even nuclear magnetic resonance is based on absorption as well as emission. The scattering spectroscopy, it is when the substance, when the electromagnetic radiation falls or go through the substance, the light gets scattered into at some specific wavelength at a particular polarization angle. And this scattering of light, it gives information regarding the molecular structure. And the, uh, this scattering and very important point that this scattering phenomena of light is much faster than the absorption and the emission. And very good example even from India is the Raman spectroscopy. Very very good technique Raman spectroscopy. However, this is used for qualitative purpose. And also it is helpful for identification of molecules and chemical bonds. So, Raman spectroscopy, it is based on the scattering spectroscopy. Now, let's jump into the application of spectrophotometric techniques. So, the application, it can be quantitative analysis, it can be qualitative analysis, it can be enzyme assay and finding or determining the molecular weight of the compound. So, in quantitative analysis, the unknown concentration of analyte can be determined with the help of absorption spectrophotometry. Because why? Because most of the biological biological organic compounds they have the ability to absorb the electromagnetic radiations. And in the UV and visible region, that is from 200 to uh, 800 nanometer and UV start from 200 even though UV start from 10 nanometer but to it, is, it uh, we take the sample uh, absorption from 200 to 400 and thereafter 400 to 800 it is visible. So for example just like uh, nucleic acid it absorb at 254 nanometer while some of the proteins they absorb the, uh, they, uh, uh, they absorb the UV uh, at 280 nanometer. In the qualitative analysis, we identif identification take place. So, 
this spectrophotometer it's used to identify the compounds if they are in if they are in pure form as well as some in biological depletions let me take tell you about that some important point over here that for example if the sample analyte is a sample it absorb the radiation or it gives the spectrum maximum uh, absorption from 220 to 280 nanometer it indicates that the analyte may be aliphatic alicyclic hydrocarbons or their derivatives however if it goes above that means if the absorption take place from 250 to 330 nanometer it indicates that the analyte may contain may contain more than two conjugated double bonds so if it is 220 to 80 that indicates the analyte may be aliphatic alicyclic hydrocarbons or their derivatives it suggests it is it can be only an idea it's not a confirmation unless and un, un, until we do all the kinds of the instrumental method of analysis and if the absorption is at from 250 to 330 nanometer then it indicates that the light may contain some uh, uh, contain more than two conjugated double bonds this effect of photometric techniques it uh, help, help in doing the enzyme assay For example, lactate dehydrogenase. This technique also helpful in determining the molecular weight of analyte. But it has been seen that the molecular weight determination can be take place, but for the those molecules which have the smaller molecular weight, not heavy molecular weight. So we can also use this spectrophotometric technique to determine the molecular weight. So this is about the spectrophotometric technique which we are going to discuss in the coming sessions. The first photospectric photo photometric uh, spectrophotometric technique is the UV visible spectroscopy and thereafter IR plus atomic absorption and so on. So we will discuss them in the coming session. Till then, thank you.